first of all, I'd like to thank Boston Scientific for giving me the opportunity to talk about the asthma term trial. Uh, I have no conflict of interest. I just have to say that this trial, asthma term trial, is uh, supported by Boston Scientific, at least in part. Uh, the mechanism of action, uh, it's... Uh, we are a belief, it thinks that uh, BT actually uh, works by reducing uh, the smooth muscle mass in the, in, in the airway. I'll show you that this is true, but I'm not sure that's the only mechanism by which BT uh, is effective. Uh, let's just uh, go back to severe asthma and uh, know that uh, severe asthma is in all asthma, but particularly severe asthma is characterized by bronchial remodeling. And you can see an example here on these biopsies. And the hallmarks of this uh, airway remodeling is uh, peribronchial fibrosis with uh, increased deposition of extracellular matrix protein uh, in, the, in the submucosa uh, with uh, um, also accumulation of fibroblasts and my myofibroblasts that you can see here. The other hallmark is the increased uh, smooth muscle mass uh, and that you can see here. And uh, it's believed that uh, smooth muscle mass, it's increased smooth muscle mass by hypertrophy or hyperplasia, uh, is involved and plays an important role in bronchial hyperreactivity, maybe in exacerbations, and also in deterioration of lung function. And you can see here on data that we obtained that were published uh, 10 years ago and uh, uh, confirmed by different uh, teams uh, that there is a very good correlation between the increase in smooth muscle mass in the airways and the FEV1. So decreasing smooth muscle mass may probably be beneficial in this patient. That's what, does, what was doing uh, uh, BT and in the preclinical study, and uh, this is a paper published uh, several years ago now, uh, that has been shown that Thermoplasty reduces uh, smooth muscle uh, in, in the dog, that you can see here, before and after thermoplasty. But you can see also that in the dog, the smooth muscle is not exactly at the same location than in human. It's just beneath the uh, 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 basal membrane, which is more profoundly uh, uh, located uh, in the submucosa in human. But in, in, in dogs, I mean, this is a mechanism of action, certainly. Uh, uh, decreasing uh, smooth muscle. And decreasing smooth muscle has been shown by, uh, you know, again, in this, uh, in this paper, that you decrease bronchial hyperreactivity. This was a beautiful study uh, where one airway was treated with thermoplasty and the other untreated. And after this uh, procedure, if you do a metacline challenge to this dog, you can see that the treated airways remains open, whereas the untreated is completely closed. So this is probably the way how it works, decrease airway smooth muscle, and then you have less bronchial hyperreactivity. In human, uh, there are very few data, and to my knowledge, the only data that I was able to find in the literature were in normal subjects that uh, were at surgery, lobectomy for lung cancer, and in these volunteers, they had thermoplasty uh, in the lobe that will be uh, uh, removed, and then they looked after uh, surgery, uh, what happened to the different structure of the, of, the, uh, of the airways. And what you can see, that there is no change in epithelium, uh, no, nothing changed, except that you have a decrease in smooth muscle. So this is probably the mechanism of action, also, although I'm convinced that it is not the only one. Now, now, the question is, uh, and after the very nice data that Jan showed, uh, will all patients with asthma will be improved after BT? And this is not, uh, you will see this is a technique which at a cost, it's not easy, not so easy, and you have to be very well trained, and probably not all patients will benefit from thermoplasty. And when you look at the literature, there is some heterogeneity of well, patients included in different studies. Some were severe, some were less severe, moderate. Uh, overall, the results are positive in terms of uh, exacerbations, uh, quality of life, but there was no change in other parameters. For instance, in no change in FEV1, no change in number of hospitalization, as has been shown. 
And I was, just as I was uh, saying, it's a highly skilled technical procedure with need to, of fundraising due to the cost. So it's important to determine which patient will really benefit from thermoplasty. And I'm sure that's what the health authorities will ask for. So that's what the objective of the asthma term trial, uh, in which we included patients that we have already uh, included in a cohort, it's a French cohort called COBRA, uh, and we have included so far, well, we plan to include uh, 1,000 asthmatics, and so far we included uh, 80 and 40 patients uh, with uh, severe or moderate or mad asthma. 60% of these patients had severe asthma, and these patients, after inclusion, had a follow-up every six months uh, with uh, measurement of function, uh, clinical status, etc. And part of these patients, a subgroup of these patients, are also bronchoscopy. And what we observed is that when we looked at this patient, and we've studied uh, so far 110 severe asthmatics with a follow-up of at least one year, and when we looked at different characteristics of this patient, particularly in terms of airway remodeling, what we observed that the airway smooth muscle area was different uh, among the patients. Uh, some patients had huge increase of smooth muscle uh, in, the, in the airways, and some other much less. And if we looked at this 110 patient, you have an example here, we have a median uh, range of 13%. Uh, that means the smooth muscle, the area of smooth muscle over the total area of the biopsy was 13%. And then using this threshold, then we could uh, separate two groups of patients. And you can see the characteristic of these patients. Well, there was no difference in gender. The patient with uh, no difference in age, no difference in age at HOP, but there was a difference in FEV1. Those patients with increased smooth muscle mass at high, at a lower FEV1. More uh, patients in this group also with high smooth muscle mass at fixed airway obstruction. And most interestingly, uh, more patients with airway smooth muscle uh, in the airway, increased smooth muscle, had uncontrolled asthma after one year of follow-up, despite the best standard care. And there was no other change, no change in other parameters of, uh, of uh, airway remodeling, such as uh, uh, s s base thickening of the subutial basal membrane. So we wonder that if this uh, patient with severe asthma and uh, high uh, smooth muscle mass in the bronchi are the best candidates for BT. So this is the uh, asthmatrum trial in which we plan to include 40 patients. So far, 18 have been included. They're all GINA4, not controlled. This is a bicentric uh, uh, study, one in Paris, in Bichat, in my hospital, and another one with uh, Pascal Chanez in Marseille. All patients included are refractory to all asthmatic treatments. They all receive everything, oral steroids, omalizumab, whatever they could get. Uh, they at least had three exacerbations per year requiring oral steroids, a severe exacerbation. And to be included, their bronchial smooth muscle area should be at least 15% of the total surface, the total surface of the biopsies. And this is the primary criteria, the primary outcome. And the hypothesis is that with BT, we will reduce the surface smooth muscle by at least 20% or more. So this patient went in at inclusion at first fibroscopy. And this is a fibroscopy with 10 biopsies in the different parts of the of, of different lobes, all, all, all the uh, pulmonary lobes. And also in the middle lobe. Middle lobe is not treated by BT, but it's at our internal control. And then we also measure the, well, the number of exacerbation, control, the FENO, they are all have CT scan. And then if their smooth mass area is 15% or more than the total surface area, they are included. There are three procedures separated by one month interval. And then after three months, another fibroscopy, CT scan, and then a follow-up until one year. And uh, just uh, briefly, uh, 
we just uh, to show you one patient, five patients have been completed. This is the first patient completed, and you can see that uh, exactly as I've shown you at the beginning of this talk, uh, after thermoplasty, this is our first patient, you see that a lot of, uh, of smooth muscle in the, in the airway, and after thermoplasty, there's no more smooth muscle here on this biopsy. Just as you can see here uh, with the alpha actin stain, it's just the, the vessels. So it works, I mean, no problem. We have a, a, a huge effect on, on smooth muscle mass. And just to conclude, uh, so far we have uh, included 18 patients and five have completed the, the trial. And all five have really, really marked clinical improvement. One of these patients, I mean, was in the ICU every month. And since she finished, that now almost four months, she's never been in the ICU anymore, and she's, she feels much better. Uh, the mechanism of BT, irritant bronchial smooth muscle, uh, is certainly it attacks on bronchial smooth muscle, but I'm not sure that it's the only uh, uh, mechanism by which we improve our patient. Now, is the asthmatum patients that I've just uh, described is the target population that we will see? But anyway, I think this is a very promising technique for severe patient, at least with severe patients with increased smooth muscle mass in the airways. Thank you for your attention.